Welcome in to sportsbookreview.com. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we are rocking and rolling through the college football previews, conference previews, and we got the Sun Belt. We got a team that went 12 and 0 last well 11 and 0 last year. That's right. We got a bunch of fun teams in this right. conference, man. I'm so excited about this. Now before we get started rolling on with it, before I tell you about my boy Jamie Chadwell, <laughs> let me go ahead and tell you what you need to do. And we need you to go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. There is a link in the description. You can just click that. You don't even have to remember the address. Just go down there and click it. Very easy to do. Also, while you're down there, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a thumbs up button. Very easy to do. That shows us that you care about what we are providing. I mean, what we do is free for you guys. We help you out. All you got to do is hit that like button. And if you like us that much, just hit subscribe. Very easy. There's a little bell icon right there. That's the notification bell. Let you know when we put new videos out. So go ahead and check that out. If you want to dive in on the conversation, let us know what you think about this conference, about these teams, whether you think they're going to go over, under, what to expect, etc. You can do that. Jump in the comments. Or if you don't like doing the YouTube comment thing, you can hit us up on Twitter. I am at Gary WCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. Or if you are very old school, I mean, I'm talking like my father, kind of old, uh, you can always email us. And that is very simple to do. I'm Gary at winningcureseverything.com. And I'm Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Let's dive in. This is the team that has kind of owned this conference for a little while up until last year. That would be the App State Mountaineers, Appalachian State. Sean Clark is the head coach. In his first year, they went 9-3 and three last season. Uh, they went 13-1 and one under Eli Drinkwitz back in 2019. Uh, projected record for this bunch is 9-3 and three across the board, SP Plus and FBI. Their win total, imagine that, sits at 9. And the over-under is juiced at 115 on both sides. So, uh, minus 115 on both sides. So, you're giving up just a little bit, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, Ten defensive starters return for this bunch. They are the number one pass success rate defense in the country last season. The run defense was fine, but is fine good enough in this conference because you've got a lot of teams that can run the ball right. in, in the Sun Belt East, for sure, uh, but throughout the entire conference. Clemson Duke transfer quarterback Chase Bryce takes over the offense, and they got they got no other quarterbacks returning for him. So Chase Bryce decided he's going to come in and get the job after throwing about 8,000 interceptions for uh, David Cutcliffe last season. All three of their running backs return, along with stud wide receiver Corey Sutton. Uh, the road schedule is rough this year at Troy, at Arkansas State, at Louisiana, at Georgia State, at Miami, Florida. Um, open up with a neutral site game against East Carolina. I got to tell you, uh, I, I'm going to go under here. I don't trust Chase Bryce, and there's nobody really behind him. Yeah, I, this team has been the model of consistency. Yes. But to get to 10 wins is rough with this schedule. Yes. I, I think, he, but here's the thing. Historically, you get close to the home, so like that helps, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Historically, App State has no problems upsetting one or two of these teams that they're supposed to beat every year. And they historically don't lose games they're not supposed to lose. I don't know if this is the historical App State that we've kind of grown up with. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't. Uh, it's I a, like Sean Clark. He's been there through no, all these other coaches. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not a not liking the coaching staff. It's a, they're just going through a weird part of, recruiting and where they where they are with this team. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. You you are correct. And getting about the that. ten wins is tough. Coastal, Louisiana, um, Miami are I all mean, three, three teams that should beat them. That that should beat them, I think will beat them. Now, could they upset one of those teams? Yes. But that means they cannot slip up against Marshall. They cannot slip up against at Georgia State. At, I would say I mean, Georgia State Arkansas State has a crazy offense that you, you know, never know. You yeah. just can get you your own. And, and road. Troy is is one of the more talented. Now I don't like their coach. No spoiler. It, it's just but. one of those things that it's scary as hell to go ten. Yes, I'd rather go eight than ten. Yes. So we're both going under nine, and that moves us to ah the mullets. The mullets are so much fun. Jamie Chadwell and his bunch won this conference last year. Went eleven and one. Lost the bowl game to Liberty yep. in the last second style. I mean, you will, that was a fun, great fun game. Ball game. We knew it was going to be a great game. Ooh, uh, returning production. They are number seventeen in the country. They got the whole slew of them back. Eighty nine percent 
Uh, their projected record is 10-2 and two by both SP Plus and FPI. And that's the two analytic metrics that we like to use if this is your first video to watch, of course. Their win total sits at 10. 10. Minus 125 to the over, minus 105 to the under. They got 20 starters back, including quarterback Grayson McCall, who is a baller. Yeah. No, Absolute stuck. baller. Uh, offense can win with big explosive plays, or they can absolutely break your back by going on seven-minute drives. They are a ton of fun. Just an absolute ton of fun. Everybody but Taron Jackson is back for the defense. Um, and this defense was really good. They were really good, but can they fix their run problems? They could not stop a lot of the runs last year. They gave over six yards per carry against Louisiana, BYU, and Liberty last year. Now, they won two of those games, uh, but they were both really, really close. Like, they beat BYU on the last play of the game. They beat uh, Louisiana on the last second field goal. Like, you're going to have to do something a little different here. Well, they don't so, have yeah. to play any of those teams. Uh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Uh, they play at Buffalo. There, there's not a single projected loss on, on the schedule. They yeah. have 11 How, games that they are projected favorites in. How many games they play this year? They play 12. They play 12. I think they win them all. You think 12-0? and 0. I really do. 12-0? and 0. I really do. I don't see a loss on the schedule. I think they're that much better than everybody else. I think when they play the coin flip teams, Jamie Tabwell is going to have his team ready. He's going to be up for them. He doesn't have a letdown. Um, and and, and I, I, I really do think they're that good. I can get down with it. I'm I going really over do. as well. Minus 125. We are both going over 10. That I, leads I love, us. love this team. Leads us into... The Georgia Southern Eagles. Now, Chad Lunsford uh, had this team rolling for a little bit, and and now maybe not so much. Win total here sits at four and a half. Over is minus 125. The under is minus 105. This is a true triple option team. Sure. That's what they do. Uh, their FP Plus projected record is five and seven, along with uh, FPI. So both the exact same thing. They went eight and five last year, seven and six the year before that. They're returning production, number 113 in the country. Yeah. Everybody else is returning basically everybody. They're returning basically nobody. I say nobody. That 62% is not bad. Uh, but their schedule, man. You think that's tough for a triple option team? That's I, that's a, the kind of ball you want experience in? Yeah, I think so, a little think bit. I think it matters. Um, I, think, I think the issue right now is that they've only got one. So they don't have a, a real starter at quarterback. Um the offensive line and three running backs return, so that's good. But if you don't get the the signal caller right at quarterback, they could run into major league issues, right? That's right. It's about uh, athleticism, and it's about yeah. reading the defense and getting the read right. Yes. Uh, their defense, by the way, uh, has been great, but they are losing their three most disruptive players. There is, uh, there's hope with some exciting new players, but the issue right now is the schedule is just brutal. Yep. They, uh, they drew Louisiana cross division. They play Arkansas and BYU in uh, in non-con. Um, to get to their fourth straight bowl is going to be really difficult yeah, to do. Yeah, I was do. just about to say, getting six wins. Yes. I mean, this is, come easy. this is really difficult looking at the schedule. At Troy, uh, at Texas State, at App State, BYU is on the schedule, like I said. Uh, Georgia State at home. Like, this is this is rough. This is rough to do, man. And, and they play the kind of ball that can keep you in games. Sure. But, I mean... One explosive play here or there, and, and they could be in some serious it trouble. It breaks their back. If they yeah. get down by two scores, it makes it really hard to come back from that. Yes. Because they don't – while their defense isn't bad, they don't get a lot of takeaways. No, you're, you're 100% right about that. Um, I'm going to go under. Yeah, what's under the juice the under again? Uh, minus 105. Yeah, I'd go under. Go yeah, under. minus 105. All right, we're going to stay in Georgia. We are going to stay in Georgia, and we are going to go to the Georgia State Panthers – Sean Elliott's team. He's got this team kind of rolling a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they, they've been better the last couple of years. Went 6-4 and four last year. Not too shabby. They are number 10 in the country in returning production. 92% of their dudes come back. Quarterback Cornelius Brown the fourth. Uh, he showed flashes of brilliance last year, but he also threw enough interceptions to make you go, eh, all right, like, I right. can see where he's yeah, a Young, inexperienced, you know? that happens. Uh, he and wide receiver Sam Pinckney. Uh, give the offense some absolute explosion. The defense improved as the year went on last year. Uh, they got a little more experience. They're going to be even more experienced this year. Uh, win total sits at 5.5. To go over is plus 110. To go under is minus 140. Uh, projected record by FBI and SP Plus is 5-7. Five 5-7. and seven. Five and seven. So they both have them going under. 
But I, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. The schedule does not Brutal. help. Yeah, Army, North Carolina, Auburn, all in their non-conference. Uh, they play at Louisiana, at Coastal, at Georgia Southern. They get Monroe. Um, that's the only yeah. like cherry well, on the on the cake, man. And they've got Texas State on here. They've got you know Troy is going to be a toss up game. Uh, they are projected favorites in six games, and I like that. I think this is a fun team. This team knows how to run. Uh, they got. I will. I will tell you this. They have to get better at running the ball because they ran it sixty eight times or sixty eight percent on oh, standard downs last yeah. year. Sorry, uh, but they finished seventy seventh in rushing success rate. But they're gonna keep doing what they do. Sean Elliott, another one of them guys that uh, that likes to chew on gravel. You know. Yeah. So I I I like them to go over. I think they're gonna go to a bowl game this year. Five and a half is the number. Yep. I'm gonna go under. So plus one ten is the over juice. Under is minus one forty. So, but you'll you'll lay the juice, huh? Yeah, I don't like it, but yeah, I'm gonna lay the juice. Uh, that that makes sense. It it breaks my heart, but it makes sense. Yeah. To stay in the division, still in the Sun Belt East, last team, the Troy Trojans. And that is Sir Chip Lindsay. And anybody that has watched us before knows I don't put a lot of trust into Chip Lindsay. I don't think he's a great coach. Uh, the amount of talent that they have had on this team the last two years. And for them to go five and six and five and seven with those teams, with what Neil Brown left at the helm, I think is a complete disaster. They should have been in bowl games the last two years. Absolutely. Uh, projected win totals seven and five by SP plus, nine and three by FPI, but the win total sits at seven. Juice is at minus 115 on the over and the under. Uh, with the talent on the roster, like they should be better. They went one and four in one score games last year. Um, I mean, a lot that's coaching. A lot of that's coaching. Uh, 21 starters back. Quarterback Gunnar Watson has experience. The offense did not show big play potential in 2020. Uh, the defense, every starter returns from a unit that improved from number 112 in efficiency two years ago to number 68 last year. So they, they are getting better, but I don't trust them. I'm going under the seven. Yeah, I, I, I think they're under the seven. I count it five wins if I was going to give a, a, a record. I think they're two games below where they're at. If they win a coin flip game, <clears throat> that still them puts game, them at six. They get some game closer. Yeah. If they lose a couple of coin flip games, they're not coming close. Yeah. I and mean, there's a world where they could win four games. Now, they are projected favorites in seven games. I don't see that, though. But, I but think that's wrong. The, thing. At, at, it, it, the projected favorites, they are favored by. The slimmest of margins. Yeah, like I like Will Hall. At, you get to our conference USA thing. Like I, I don't think Southern Miss is some pushover. Okay. Yeah. Like South Carolina's obviously got a new coach and a new team. It's an SEC team. Yeah. They're still. That's not going to be easy. Coastal's still really good. Louisiana, App State, Georgia State on the road. Well, yeah, but I'm not. I'm talking like I will give you Georgia State as a coin flip game. Like, if you lose all of the games, Liberty, that I rolled off. Like, the the ceiling for you is five wins. Yeah. I don't know how we get to seven. You pull two upsets out of your butt and don't slip up and lose to somebody you're not supposed to lose. It's tough. It is. I mean, we're doing this at the beginning of July. Makes it really hard to project what's going to happen three months from now. But, man, this is not going to be easy. No, it is not. I, I, I was shocked when I saw the number was as big as it is. Ditto. I was shocked. Ditto. Um, I mean, again, talent. Has a lot to do with that. Town's got a lot to do with it. Moving on to the other division, the Sun Belt West. Let's start off with the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Butch Jones is the new coach. Former Tennessee coach, former Cincinnati coach, former Central Michigan coach. The projected records here, SP Plus has them at 4-8. and eight. FBI has them at 6-6. Six and six. The win total, difference. win total, check this out, 3.5. Yeah, I thought that was insane. The over is <laughs> juiced at minus 165. Now, that makes sense. Yes. Right? Um, the under at plus 135. That's a really short number. Yes. And a real, real short number. Now, the head coach, Blake Anderson, left for Utah State. Butch Jones comes in after being an analyst at Alabama long enough to get his Tennessee buyout. That makes sense. Uh, offense brings back quarterback Lane Hatcher, uh, but they lose their top two targets. There is uh, a lot of potential, though. They got four offensive line starters back. The offense is going to be fine. Jones kept the offensive coordinator, Heckendorf. Uh, defense imploded. In 2020. Yeah, the, the, oh. the defense hasn't been good. 
It, no, they, uh, but they they weren't as bad as they were last year. Well, true. I mean, they were giving up fifty points on the regular last year. Well, yeah, like, it was off score. Uh, number scoring close to 40, 50 points. Well, yeah, too. exactly. They, they were number one twenty two in passer rating allowed last year. That is dreadful. Dreadful. True. Uh, only eight. No, only seven teams were worse than them. No, only five teams were worse because there were three say, teams that didn't even play. I was about to say we got God. several teams that didn't play. Ridiculous. We didn't get to one thirty. Uh, the run defense was stout, but it did not matter because teams no. could throw at well, will. No, it, it was stout only because nobody threw on. No one ran on them. Yeah. Because why would you run on them? Uh, well, yeah. I mean that, that makes perfect sense. Like you, you could get whatever you wanted through the air. Uh, new defensive coordinator Rob Harley uh, comes from Pitt. That's Pat Narduzzi's staff. He has nine returning starters, and they brought in three new P5 defensive linemen. I was just about to say the transfers are going to help. That's, uh, that's The transfers are going to make this defense look different than they've ever looked. I, I know it's a lot of juice. I'm going to go over the three and a half. Oh, you have yeah. to. You yeah. have to. This team is not going to lose nine games. They're just, just not going to no, do it. I don't think so. They're not that bad. Uh, they have at South Alabama, at Louisiana Monroe. They play Texas State at home. They've got Central Arkansas to open the season. Yeah, Central I mean, I think Arkansas, that's right Louisiana, there. Monroe, and Texas State can get you to three. I think they can that's beat Georgia Southern. That's if you don't Southern. get any coin flip games. Yeah. Now, their non-conference is, is difficult, right? Oh, yeah, Memphis, but we're not, we're not like, trying to get you to six wins. No. We're trying to get you to three. Well, four. four. Sorry, yeah. we're trying to get you to four. Memphis to at Washington three. at Tulsa is their non-conference. That's right. Um, along with Central Michigan. but Playing Coastal on the other side of the bracket's not what you want, but that, that's, that's part okay. of it. Yeah, we're I, we're trying to get you to four. I not, think they can get not to four. six, not seven. We're just getting you to four. I think they can do that. I think so as well. I, I think and as much Jones, as I like making fun of Butch Jones, at Tennessee level, he's not a good coach. But Central Michigan and Cincinnati, there's a reason he got the Tennessee job at yes. this level of football. I think he knows what he's doing. I think he does as well. Uh, talking of something or somebody that knows what he's doing. The Louisiana Rage and Cajuns with head coach Billy Napier. Well, yeah, this outside of Jamie Twelwell, this is this yes. is our favorite coach in the conference. Better believe that returning production is number three in the country, ninety five percent returning production. That is crazy. Yeah, crazy. Uh, they got twenty one starters back, and it's one of the best run games in the country. Now they lost both of their running backs, but the two guys that are coming in behind no, them. I'm not worried about that. They, they're they just look gonna, just as good. They're just going to replace good. them. Uh, so their secondary dominated every single receiver that they went up against last year. Like, this was a fantastic team. Remember, this team beat up on Iowa State. I was say, this is a team that went into yes. Ames yes. and beat up, physically beat up, and never trailed in that game. They dominated the football game from start to finish against the second-best team in, in the, the Big, Big 12. 12. Yes. That's yes. insane. A team that finished ranked in the top 10 last year. That's insane. Uh, 30-year-old defensive coordinator Patrick Tony uh, returns all defensive starters after the D improved from 66th to 40th in efficiency in his first season. Their only losses were the running backs, like I said, Mitchell and Regis. Uh, the backups look great in 2020. Their first game against Texas, and that is going to be interesting. Now, the win total, 9.5. And, and here is the difference between the two projected records. SP Plus has them at 10-2. and two. FPI has them at seven and five. That's insane. I can't explain that. It, some of the FPI numbers I have. I can't. I, no I can't idea. explain that. How do you get there? Uh, you, How do you get you five go, losses on this for a team that kicked the shit out of everybody but Coastal last year. Well, here's the here's the issue. They didn't actually kick the shit out of everybody. No, but they, they, they won, won a lot of close games. games. No. But they don't lose close games, Gary. That's you're 100. percent They right. lost to Coastal in a close game. That's it. Yeah. And they didn't. They, they didn't lose to anybody else in close games. No, they they actually didn't lose a single other game. They went ten and well, one no, last they year. They went ten and one. They yeah. they lost to Coastal in a really close game. Yeah, they were this close to finishing eleven and zero. Eleven and three in twenty nineteen. <laughs> Defensive returning production is number one in the country. They bring back ninety eight percent of their production. Number six on offense. They bring back ninety three percent of their production on that side. Uh, the schedule sets up nice outside of the Texas game. You know they play Ohio. But I think they're going to win that game at Georgia Southern. You know, the, at, the Liberty game at yeah. the end of the schedule is going to be. That's going to be crazy. I think it's that's going to be, going a fun to be an game. incredible game. I really think it's going to be an incredible game. I'm going over the nine and a half. Okay. Even if they lose to Liberty, I think they could win every single game on the schedule outside of of. It. I, I even think that they can beat Liberty. Yeah. But yeah. At, how many how many games they play? They play twelve. I think they win them all. You think they win them all? Yeah, I do. 
I think they go into the you Big think 12. We could have I think they go into the Big 12, and I think they kick the shit. No, I, mean, I, the shit. I think they beat Texas. I think Texas is going through a lot of turmoil, and there are a lot of chaos. And if they are undefeated against Liberty at the end, they're not losing that game. I think you're right. They're not losing that game if they're undefeated. Now, if they've got two now, losses by that time, anything can happen. On. Hold on. I Let like me. this coach. I like this team. I think you're going to get 12-0 and against 12-0 and in the conference. That's what and I, I was can't not say that. Cat's out of the bag. Because both of them, I think, are going 12-0. and I think they're that good. <laughs> I think this I could be it. the fourth best conference in football with their top two guys. I think so as well. I do think so. I, I think I think more likely they go 10-2. and two. Well, Yeah, obviously do, that's more likely. But, but I do like the 12-0. and 0. Do you, it Sounds fun. Do you, I'm going to tell you this. I will have a money line play that Texas Saturday. I can get down with that. I will have a money line play on that Texas because chaos – they, they go into the Big 12, and they think we belong here. Yes. Listen, we're right down the road. We're just across the state line, and we absolutely are not afraid of you. I like we it. We went into the Big 12 last year and kicked the crap out of a team. We're not afraid to come in here and do this again. We we started off with kind of the big dogs here. Well, um, Yeah, that's because that's how it kind of worked out alphabetically. Well, yeah, alphabetically. Uh, so let's let's talk about some of the uh, the lesser than. That's right. Oh, now, uh, now the air is going to get let out. Yeah, I, and I hate to say lesser than. Yeah. Um, but just the way know, the conference just, works out. The, the strength right now is not with these teams. We will start off here with South Alabama, the Jaguars. New head coach, Kane Womack. He's a lot of fun. So they're going away from the triple option now. Well, they, they were never with the triple option. South That's Alabama hadn't been. They, they had oh, Desmond no, no. Trotter at quarterback last year. They were throwing the ball all over the place. No, no, no. You're right. Um, I'm confusing them. Indiana defensive coordinator Kane Womack is the dude. He was the defensive coordinator at South Alabama his last year, 2016-17, around about. Um, this is an interesting setup here. Their projected record by both analytic spots that we use, 4-8. and eight. Uh, Their win total is 4.5. The over, juiced at minus 105, the under juiced at minus 125, so Vegas thinks it's more likely that they go under. Um, offense brings in quarterback Jake Bentley. Everybody remembers him. Yeah. Played at Utah last year, actually rode the pine last year, but since he's a super senior, he uh, he got to transfer again. He was at South Carolina before, got beat out by Ryan Helinski. Um, you know, they're, they're going to pair him up, and they still have uh, Desmond Trotter, the quarterback there. Uh, one of those quarterbacks is going to be able to win this job, and pair with star wide receiver Justin Tolbert, new offensive coordinator, you're going to recognize this name, Major Applewhite. Yeah. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, like he's been all over the place, right? He was at Texas, he was at Alabama, he was head coach at Houston, he was the offensive coordinator at Houston, he was, you know, he's been all over the place. Now he's at South Alabama. Uh, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with that offense. Defense is changing to a 4-2-5 scheme. Uh, that's what Womack used to, to make him so successful under Joey Jones way back when. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know how much talent is, is actually on the roster. Yeah. Like, I, it, yes, there is some because they're based in Mobile. That's right. But can it all gel? How much actual talent is there? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go under the four and a half. Uh, I know it's juiced at minus 125. I, I don't care. I think that's the right call. Looking at their schedule, uh, I don't see, I don't see five wins here. See, so, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I think I can get to five. I got to squint real hard and get a little sideways. <laughs> well, that's that's the issue. And I, like I, the, I wouldn't try I like to. The, squint. I like the money play, but the problem is, is I don't. You, you're not getting over five, but I also don't think you're getting under four. You don't think so? No, no. I mean, they're they're a lot better than Bowling Green, Alcorn State, um, and and Monroe. You know, I think they'll they'll be Texas State or they'll be in the game with Texas State. Troy's up and coming. Like we we think good of them. The the rest of us get they're not winning. Like they're just not winning them. So yeah. that's their that's their ceiling. They they are projected favorites in three games, three games. Bowling Green. So I got to get them to Bowling two, Green. I got to get two upsets. Uh, Louisiana Monroe and Alcorn State. So you, yeah, you got to get two upsets. So I'll take the over. Okay, I'll take the over. I can get down with it. I like the money. I like the juice. I mean, I that does lay, make sense. I don't want to lay a lot. Lay a lot. I'll take I mean, it up over. Over is minus one hundred five. Yeah, it's a nice payday. Nice payday. All right. Moving on, Jake Spavital and the Texas State Bobcats. This is an interesting idea that he has come up with. His plan to rebuild the Bobcats. Um, I wouldn't have thought of it. I will tell you that. Their win total this year is four and a half. Yeah. To go over is plus 110. Uh, to go under is minus 140. 
And both SP Plus and FBI have them going over. FBI has them at six and six. SP Plus has them at five and seven. Wow. Um, you know, returning production, like number 40 in the country, 81% coming back. Uh, this is, I mean, it's a tough schedule. It's absolutely a tough schedule. Uh, they were in five one-score games last year. They had six games where the total went over 65 points yeah. <laughs> last year. Uh, quarterback Brady McBride, um, he's back, and this Bobcat offense is is probably going to be the best since 2014. Uh, McBride has has Manziel tendencies. Maybe maybe Brady football. Can we can we call him Brady football? I don't I'm gonna call him Brady football. All right. Uh, they they signed zero high schoolers in this recruiting class. They brought in one JUCO and all transfers. Now you know this is what I've I've said for a long time. Yeah. If I was on a if I was trying to rebuild a, a school that's perennially bad, just just go out and get tr- JUCOs because or JUCOs transfers from all these Power Five schools, yeah, Power Six schools. All of those players in the transfer portal, if they were third or fourth, they're better than your players. They they just are. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. Um, Spavital, uh, the the younger brother, Zach Spavital, yep, led the number one twenty most efficient defense in SP Plus. It's not what you want. Uh, they're still playing catch up on defense, even with the yeah. transfers coming in. It's just going to be uh, a bit of an issue. I'm going to go under the four and a half. So I'm I laying the juice. I can't. Yeah. I can't get. I'm struggling to get to four wins. I definitely can't get to five. Yeah, that's that's the issue. Even but with I, do, the I do like the way they're rebuilding. It, it just is going to take time to figure that thing out. Yes. But, yes, yes these types of teams need to be – there shouldn't be a 1,000 kids sitting in the transfer portal. You just rebuild your entire roster with all new guys, and then hopefully they have two years of eligibility when you bring them in. Your second year, they're good. Yes. Yes. I'm with you. All right. Finally, last team – in the Sun Belt, and that would be da, 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 the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks, who were atrociously bad last year. Went 0-10. Oh, um, Terry Bowden is the new head coach. That's right. And he brought in wily veteran offensive coordinator Rich Rodriguez. Yeah. Uh, just a, a strange, a strange pairing. The win total sits at one and a half. I was just about to say, can't get two. The over, plus 135. So they are fully expecting one win. And even that one win that is expected uh, is against Jackson State. I was just I was just about to say, are we positive they get that win? I don't think so. Because How, what Dion, do you think a number on that game would be if you had to set it right now? Primetime, are, Neon, Dion. Are, are, we, are we still a touchdown? Or no? I think it would be under a touchdown. I, I think, think so too. Jackson State is an underdog of five, six yeah, yeah. points. Less than a touchdown, more than a field goal. Yes. That's what that's that's exactly what I would have this game, which tells me there's no doubt in my mind Jackson, uh, Jackson State could win that game. It, analytically, there is not a single game on the schedule other than South Alabama that would be less than double digits. Yeah. I mean, this is rough. It's gonna, this it's gonna, rough. it's gonna be a long road to hoe for Terry Bowden. He, but listen, him and Rich Rod could completely reinvent invent themselves. Yes, at this school, if they get them, I mean, if they get this team in four years to a bowl game, they they have got a couple of players that like can I say a couple? They've got a few players that can show some promise, right? Well, and they're gonna, and this is a team. Yeah, I, I assure you, Rich Rod is gonna hit the transfer portal for offense. Oh yes, yes, yes. Like uh, over now, the next two to three years. I see him. He knows the SEC. He knows the Big Twelve. He knows the Big Ten. He knows those areas. He's got no problems going in there and saying, uh, "You're not making it here. Come down to Louisiana Monroe, yeah. baby. Come down to Monroe. We'll we'll hook you up." Uh, I'll tell you this: He is going to utilize Perry Carter Jr., the wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, very much. A, so. But that's his weapon. Yeah, that's, that's his. That's they've, his got, they've got oh, they've got oh weapon. Pretty much. They got one bullet. Uh, their depth and raw talent at the bottom of the Sun Belt, uh, even with the transfers. Uh, although, Tough. you know, like I said, there's a few players. Linebacker uh, Travion Webster, that's a name to watch out for. Um, it's a tough you know, schedule they, as well. It, out of their 10 losses last year, nine of them were by 18 points or more. Yeah, like, no, they that, got doesn't blown su- out. that doesn't surprise me. I, I, they might be 14 points this year, but I, st- I still think they're double digits. And yeah. They're not, it's not going to be close. It's not going to be pretty. No, you're... You're right about that. Start it with some bangers. We we finished with some 
some duds. You are correct about that. So, with that said, let's talk about the championship game. I think we both have the same championship matchup. I'm going Coastal Carolina against Louisiana. Yep. And That's I don't know matchup. that they're both going to be undefeated. I got them undefeated. I know you're 12 and 0 against 12 and 0, fighting for a playoff so, berth. Yeah. Everybody talking about Cincinnati. That's Y'all ain't so, talking yeah. about hey, the what, Hey, hang on now. Hang on. What if what if them and Cincinnati are both undefeated? Boy, that'd be a hell of a spot. Well, what if you, both of them are? Don't yeah. You, don't you wish that we this had was, this was the, the extended team. playoff? This is what's going to blow it up, Gary. This is what's going to blow the damn thing up. Is that's going to happen this year? And Everybody in the big, all the Power Five commissioners are going to be, oh, no, we can't lose two of us. We can't lose two of us. No, no, yeah. no. I'm taking Louisiana to win it. I am too. Holy cow. <laughs> I don't like betting against Jamie Chabwell, but I think Chabwell got him last year. I think he gets him this year. I, I think Napier gets him this year. But I, but I do think that both of these coaches get meal tickets this year. Oh, yes. I think they're holding lottery tickets. I think both of them finished 12-0, and and I think before the bowl game, Wherever they go, because both of them going to get left out of the playoff. That's just going to happen. Yep. Doesn't matter. I think both of them are cashing that lottery ticket, and they're they're going to be somewhere else. I think you're probably right. I think South Carolina was a fool last year. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Because I would have taken both of these I'm not going to talk trash about Shane Beamer No, yet, I'm not either. It's not a knock on Beamer. I think both of these two coaches are exceptional. I think so as well. I would not have let either one of them get out. No. You're coming in for an interview, and we're just locking the door. Might be what happens next year. We well, no, see. they're not going to fire Beamer after one year. No, no, no. I'm saying whoever brings them in next. Oh, well, yeah. Because Napier is the one that, like, turned down South Carolina. Yes, Napier so. did turn them down. But that's – you can't let him turn you down. No, you can't – got to – hey, back up the Brinks truck. No, you just lock the door and we, we figure this thing out. <laughs> All right, that is going to wrap up our Sun Belt preview. Thank you for sticking around. If you have stuck around this long, I think that might mean that you like us a little bit. And if that's the case, hit that like button for us. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And head over to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. There's a link down in the description. Again, you want to jump in in the comments, you can do so. Let us know what you think about each of these teams. If we talked about your team, you can certainly jump in. If you don't want to do the YouTube comment thing, again, we get it. Hit us up on Twitter. I'm at GaryWCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. And we're going to get out of here. For sportsbookreview.com, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And we will see you again next time.